This is me? That's you. What is this? Don't drink too much. <laughs> Don't drink too much. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, evidently, I'm to... <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Yes. All right. Evidently, I'm Totenkopf, um, and I'm talking about hijacking the outdoor digital billboard network. Okay? Sweet. Exactly. <laughs> um, what we're covering today is why we did this. If <laughs> Is it going to... There we go. Um, who are they? They being the company. Um, billboard technologies that exist because there are different manufacturers that build these billboards. Um, the physical and network vulnerabilities, tools and information needed in case you want to try this. It may come in handy theoretically. <laughs> it, oh no, that's coming. Um, what not to do if you're going to hack a billboard, and who would do this and why. And I have my obligatory disclaimer there that um, I am not suggesting, teaching, or condoning the hacking of outdoor digital billboards. <laughs> Even though it's really, really cool and really, really fun. <laughs> I didn't say a company, but okay. I agree completely. Um, why, we're, why we did this? Um, I was told by my dad that I bet you can't hack that. <laughs> Um, no one else has done it yet. We saw it as a possible target for future lulls. Um, we don't have the money that Skullphone had to pay for the actual advertisement and claim it was a hack. And we were drunk and it sounded like an awesome idea at the time. Who are they? They being the company again. Um, they are an international telecommunications company. Um, boasts that they have the only digital billboard network in the country. Now this is quickly changing because other companies are realizing they can save money and make money by doing this as well as get the environmentalists off their back because they can claim that they're being green. Um, by the time this presentation is done actually, the company will um, have some billboards out in Europe like um, England, France, and Tokyo, even though that's not Europe. <laughs> Um, who are they continued? Um, they're a very litigation happy company. They have a super big team of lawyers, I assume, and I have none. As a matter of fact, my dad said after giving this talk, if I get arrested, he doesn't have bail money, even though he dared me to do this. <laughs> no, my dad's awesome. <laughs> he actually made this presentation for me. <laughs> Exactly. Um, the company logo appears as the blurry thing in all of the pictures, and um, they utilize different manufacturers for their billboards, so there's many more vulnerabilities that way. Billboard technologies. Um, to our knowledge, three primary types are in use. There's, um, primary, or there's Verizon Telephone Network, wireless and satellite, and direct connect. And by direct connect, I mean you can walk up um, and plug your laptop in. Okay. Um, billboard technologies, the Verizon telephone network interface. It's easily viewable. They, um, <clears throat> they have a box there. And it, inside of the box, they have easily viewable testing and wiring instructions. So if you don't know if it's working, you can plug a phone in and see if it's connected. And there's um, reason to believe that there's go, no go in use. Um, unfortunately, Philosopher, who did the telephone portion of this presentation, is not here. He had to go catch a flight. So if you ask me anything about telephone systems, I'll plead ignorant. Um, Self-actuated data connections for updated purposes are presumed. And there's a picture of um, <clears throat> the connections as well as the test instructions. And the great thing about this was that there was no lock protecting this. So you can just walk up to the billboard, see this box, open it, 
read the instructions, and then perform the tests. Exactly, you gotta love Verizon employees. Um, billboard technologies, uh, wireless and satellite. The second type of billboard site noted contains a nondescript box with a satellite dish attached to the top of the billboard. The existence of POTS in addition to unencrypted wireless traffic at the sites of digital billboards presents a security risk. Now the great thing about this, um, about their wireless network is that it's unencrypted and it's not protected at all. We did a simple drive-by and we were able to see the network that the billboard was projecting from and connect. Um, you could capture packets to see where, billboard, where the billboard is broadcasting to, spoof that IP address, and then, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But again, I don't know how to do this because this is all in theory. <laughs> That's a very bad picture of the security camera. There's only one at every billboard site pointed directly to the billboard. There's a security camera with the satellite. <laughs> yeah. The plug-in technologies. Um, there's an, also another unlabeled box that exists at the third site with a secured master lock. Um, or it's secured with a master lock. Um, the medium of external communication from this billboard is n unknown at this time because we ordered um, a lockpick kit back in January and it came Wednesday. <laughs> so that was great. Exactly. That's a picture of the plug and play site. Um, to the far left you can see that there's a power source. You don't want to touch that box. Um, the, in the middle is the metal box with the master lock where we assume that's where you can plug your laptop in. And then there's a surge, um, a surge suppressor on the right. <clears throat> Known physical vulnerabilities. Social engineering. Um, salespeople are really cool because they'll answer any questions you have if they think they're going to make a sale. Uh, we were able to find out image specs, uploading information, and some security procedures just by saying that we wanted to, we were interested in um, buying some space on their billboards. Also, I'm a college student majoring in marketing still works. Okay, the billboard, it, as I said before, it has one security camera pointed at the image on the billboard. There's nothing surrounding the area around the bottom of the billboard. No gate, no fence, there's no security camera pointed to the box. Um, it's located off the side of, a, of most major roads. Most of them don't have um, heavy traffic between 2.30 and 4 o'clock in the morning, I assume. <laughs> Um, continue with the uh, billboard's physical vulnerabilities. Usually they're within walking distance of a parking lot that's almost um, empty during the same hours. And the only thing between you and the console at the bottom of a billboard is a commercial master lock. And sometimes that's not even there. And there's a picture of their master lock. Network vulnerabilities. They're vulnerable to people connecting wirelessly because, again, they don't encrypt and they don't protect. Um, they don't protect it at all, right, Shardy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're vulnerable to packet sniffing and actually war dialing. We ha we didn't have the opportunity to try this, but we were talking to a sales associate, and they said it is a concern of theirs. Network vulnerabilities, um, they're guilty of not closing unused ports, no encryption, using default usernames and passwords, and using global usernames and passwords. We were, it's, uh, we got that through social engineering, which basically consisted of talking to a guy that worked there and buying him some drinks. Said, hey, how about them billboards? Speaking of drinking. Drink more. Yeah. 
<clears throat> some useful information. Um, image requirements from the company's website. Digital billboard or digital bulletin should be 200 by 704 pixels. Um, red, green, blue, 72 DPI in a JPEG format. Um, it's also nice to know which billboard you're going to, unless you just want to drive aimlessly around. And also, the company's website has a nice, you know, nifty map of where all their billboards are and which ones are connected to which. Also, a cover story is awesome in case you get questioned by authority figures like police or parents. Now, um, <laughs> so I was war dialing, by, or not war dialing, but war driving by myself. And um, I stopped for a second in the parking lot, and a cop knocked on my window. And I'm like, oh, crap. He's like, what are you doing, ma'am? Um, I'm looking up directions to my grandmother's house. Can you help me? I'm so lost. And I started crying. And... <laughs> <laughs> and it was nice he escorted me to my grandmother's house. <laughs> okay, tools needed. A laptop. Duh. Um, depending on which billboard you approach, you may need a laptop with wireless and packet sniffing tools. A lockpick kit. If you use it, you get plus one ninja point, plus one style. Bolt cutters in lieu of lockpick kit in case eBay's really slow with your lockpick kit. <laughs> with the use of bolt cutters, you lose a ninja point, but you gain a brute forcing that bitch point. <laughs> and miscellaneous tools dependent upon the type of the billboard. What not to do? Try this during the day or peak hours of the evening. Um, as a general rule of thumb, wait about half an hour after last call to ensure that the drunks are well on their way and the cops are messing with them and not caring about you fiddling around at the bottom of a billboard. Um, this, is last, this is Vegas. What's last fall? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it in Vegas. <laughs> well, no. Actually, that'd be really funny. Do it in Vegas. <laughs> um, wait, I didn't say that, though. <laughs> Um, don't do it during the holidays and or during the weekend because the cops are driving around doing more rounds than usual. Don't forget to use gloves in case, you know, it gets televised. Um, don't mess with the box with the bright orange sticker on it. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't know who this company is. I don't know. Huh? Okay. Oh, okay. Unamerican.com. And it has the sticker of the company's name. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but I'm not saying the company's name because, oh crap, this is being filmed. Um, <laughs> what not to do? Hack a billboard near your house. Um, leave any sort of evidence that you were there besides the image and pay for the advertisement and claim it was a hack. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Who would do this? Um, artists, it's a new medium that's in a public place, gets lots of exposure. Young people, because hormones plus destruction of someone else's property equals lulls. And that's math. You can't argue with math. <laughs> Hackers, because it's something new to exploit and take advantage of, and it's really, really fun. Assumably. Mm -hmm. uh, who else would do this? Extremists, because digital billboards would be a great way for them to spread their message to a large audience quickly and with little or no cost to them. Governments. See extremists above. <laughs> Why would they want to do this? Um, vandalism, because there will always be someone who wants to destroy someone else's property. Uh, digital graffiti, um, again, it's a new medium, and they can either slightly alter pre-existing advertisements to convey some, uh, another meeting, or the images can be taken offline, and the graffiti artist could use them um, as a clean canvas. You, sort of like... Um, Oh my goodness, I just... The digital graffiti research labs, you know how they have the... 
Yeah, woo! <laughs> How they, um, I forget what it's called. Yes, they use the laser projector to do graffiti. You could take the billboard offline and, you know, do laser graffiti. Uh, why else would they want to do this? Guerrilla advertising. Now, this is sort of a buzzword that um, doesn't have any real meaning, but it usually alludes to aggressive, unconventional marketing methods that is done on the cheap, uses psychology, and focuses more on creativity and generating more referrals and bigger transactions. <clears throat> Spreading propaganda. I mean, think about it. Why settle just for the news, TV commercials, emails, and posters? By placing your message on the billboard network, it'll appear for eight seconds on every billboard in the network continuously for an undetermined amount of time. And the lulls. <laughs> but this defense will only work in internet court. <laughs> huh? IRC. Uh, yes, uh, no, IRC. Oh. Oh no. Special thanks to my dad because oh. <laughs> to Rev for doing um the social engineering work, philosopher for um doing all the research on phones, Shardy for sitting up here and drinking with me. Just for the record, I'm not her dad. <laughs> Um, Alex for giving me booze and making sure I calm down. And Neon Rain for the anti-nausea pill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, for more information, you can contact me directly at totenkopf at gmail.com. Um, I will soon have a website with pictures, information, and video. Not necessarily my pictures, information, and video. Just ones that were floating around the web. <laughs> um, any questions? Yes. In, in the, the guy who just took off his hat. You could arguably take over the entire sequence, um, filter or um, have several images rotate, or as somebody very, very sadistic told, suggested, you could have it flash so people driving could have seizures. <laughs> oh, okay. Anybody else? Okay, cool. Thanks.